My name is Sumit and I am from Mumbai. I have came across in Prabhupada's books and in your own lectures. So I would like to ask, why are you Hare Krishnas so opposed to modern schools? Why am I so opposed to modern schools? Well, it's not just me. Uh, it's any intelligent person. I mean, even materially, the, there are people, you can see people wearing t-shirts saying, I was born intelligent, but then I got an education. <laughs> it's quite a common motive in the, uh, in the Western world. Modern education, the term, the very term shows what's wrong with it. Because education means to give knowledge, and if you say modern education, it gives the idea that it's different to what it was previously. That means it's, there's no fixed platform, which means it's not knowledge. As I've many times given the example, when I was at school, I was taught that the biological cell uh, is a very simple, uh, what shall we say, matrix. Or, and uh, soon scientists will be able to produce that in the laboratory. So in my biology class, I answered the question that, that, like that. If I was to answer in the same way today, what I got a pass for previously, I get to fail for now, because now they discovered that it's much, much more complex than they thought it was. So that means it wasn't knowledge. It wasn't proper education at all. And a postscript to this is that even much later I found out that even when they were teaching this to me, they had already discovered that the cell is much more complex than they thought it was, but it takes time to update the curriculum. And uh, anyway, the you have to wait for all one generation of teachers and scientists because then they're never because they they're convinced it's true that, that the the cell is very simple you have to wait for them all to die out that's the uh, kuhn his uh, thomas kuhn the, what is the, the the nature of scientific revolutions he says that even if something's found out and proved scientifically you have to wait for all the old generation of scientists to die out before it becomes accepted, because they'll never accept it. <laughs> so, so he, Thomas Kuhn, one of the most uh, important thinkers of the latter, uh, latter half of the 20th century, pointed out that scientists, they're not so scientific anyway. They're, they, they're, they have their material foibles and uh, so, uh, the very term modern education gives the idea that, well, it's really up to date, which means that it's not knowledge, it's the latest speculation. The whole, the whole idea is that, well, that's what we know best now, and we pretty much they can be sure that whatever they know now, it won't be accepted as knowledge in the future. Uh, they, you, they, Scientists and educators can be pretty sure that uh, if, in, if we come in 500 years and we still have science classes, then whatever you're taught nowadays would be largely superseded by various breakthroughs in science and different paradigms. So that's, not, so that's one reason. Another reason is that they, the modern education means it's largely on an atheistic basis. Uh, they don't teach what is the ultimate goal of life. They don't teach who you are. First thing everyone should learn. They should know who am I. It's just presumed in modern education. In the, it's presumed in the modern society. No one talks about it much, but it's just presumed that we're here to live and enjoy this life and don't even think about what happens after it. So it's a very, very blind society. The, the f Actually, children, they often ask this kind of question, that, well, what happens after death? Why do we die? And parents just say, oh, don't ask such a silly question. To the child, it doesn't seem stupid. And actually, it's not stupid. It's a very good question. But the parent, the parent doesn't even want to think about it. 
They're, af they're afraid even to discuss the question. So they say, say it's a silly question, they go on with their life, working, getting money, spending money, wishing they had more money, and blocking out of their mind the important question that even a child will think about. So this education is uh, how to live in ignorance of the real questions of life. Of course, there are philosophers who take up these kind of questions, the secular philosophy, but the nature of philosophy is that the more you study it, the more confused you become in the modern kind of philosophy. So that's useless. That's not philosophy. That's, that's uh, just an, all kinds of... Because there are so many ideas and so many people think so many things, then you get confused. Therefore, tadvidhi pranipate na pariprasne na sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnanena sattvadarsana. Once you go to someone who knows and learn from that person, there's a system to learn from that person. There is knowledge. There is actual knowledge of reality and what we're doing here. The very idea that we, we seek education, we're not content just to like animals, to, to grow up and get some food somehow or other, grab some animal and kill it and eat it, or, or some man grabs some woman and rapes her. And we're not humans, why do they need education? You could live like, we could all live like that. Why do we have education? Well, what, what is this, what is this urge to know? Where does that come from? That suggests that there is, just like we feel thirsty, there's an urge to drink water because there is an actual need for that and a use for that. So there is a desire to to get knowledge and to uh, come to a higher platform. What is the what is the ultimate? Why is that? Because ultimately, there is knowledge. Uh, there is ultimate knowledge, so we can find out where to get that knowledge, how to get that knowledge. That is the Vedic system. Veda means knowledge. Knowledge that's very different from what they call modern education. Knowledge, uh, shifting knowledge. But that which is true is always true. Even materially we can say some things, they don't change in course of time. 2 plus 2 equals 4. It was true. Even before there were, if we accept this Darwinian theory of evolution, which we don't, but even if you say there were humans who didn't understand these things, but still it was true then, it always will be. And there's another thing. What is a number anyway? It's, it's a concept. It's just a concept, that's all. There's no, there's no thing such as a number. What is a zero? Put a zero after a one. It's all, it's all conceptual, but it works. How is that? God's a good mathematician. Everything's, everything works according to mathematics. All these laws of science, you have to understand mathematics. <coughs> What if we had a, uh, a, no, a nu numerical system that the zero came not eight, nine, ten, but eight, nine, something, something, and then at twelve, then our whole mathematics would be different. Have you got the point? What's the word? The base is ten. But if it went up to twelve, our whole mathematics, it seems to me it would be more interesting, because 12 is a more interesting number than 10. <laughs> it's, there are many more things. But uh, we're so, I'm, I'm just bringing these things out just to suggest that there's so many things we don't even think about. We just go to school, study, ram these things in your head, and that's called education.
how to make yourself more dull, isn't it? Children, when they're young, they're, they're, they're very bright and hopeful. After they've been to school, by the time they're about 12 years old, they're so... They lost all their brightness and they are smoking and in the Western countries, uh, all, all bad habits, sex, everything. So it, it just takes the spirit out of it. Then they have this kind of edu Montessori education which they try to make, bring out the creative impulse within the children. But that's also useless because it still doesn't answer the question, who am I? What is the purpose of life? Where am I going? This is education. Etaj jnanam iti proktam jnanam yadata Well, How does that begin? That series of verses. Bhagavad Gita. Can't you shut up? I'm asking the kids. Too late. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 13, text number 8, isn't it? 8 to 12. He already said it. Amanitvam adhambitvam. Mm. Yeah. Education means character building. One should develop good qualities. If Otherwise, what's the point? If, you, if you're an educated... Uh, educated but nasty, What's that? Then you use your education to exploit others and uh, to exploit those who are less educated. Then it becomes like the, the jewel on a snake's hood. It looks very nice, but it, the snake is still very dangerous. Mm. So there it is in some. Why am I against modern education? Well, I, I, I went through so many years of it. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to put anyone else through that. Through that horrible experience of having to study so many things which I knew were useless. And even the teachers said to one teacher that, I, I, in the class I said once, I said, I said, this is all nonsense. The teacher said, yeah, but you have to study it to get your exam, then you can forget it all. <laughs> Just nonsense. I remember it was, it was sociology class and reading of he was reading about fishermen in Hull, which is a city in England, and how they go out to sea and then they come back and then they get drunk and then they go and spend all their money and then they go back. And, What's the point? Of, what is this? Why do you want to study that for? <laughs> it's called, and they use all these fancy words like anime and this and that. We're just talking about a bunch of fishermen who get drunk and then go on a pub crawl, which means they go from one pub to another, to another, to another, to another, till they're completely drunk. They spend a few days, they spend all their money, then they go out on the fish on the fishing boat again. What do you want to learn about that for? What's the value of that? It must be better. It must be better things to learn about than that. <laughs> 